Welcome back to Business and Politics. We're talking to Attorney Brenda Pimentel. A uh, very interesting discussion on, on seafarers and SETW. Um, so what needs to happen? I mean, I'm trying to get wrap my mind around it. So um, do we need more uh, policies or policy reform? Do we need more investment in facilities? Is it both of those, or is it something else that we need so that we ad address the certification issue that not only, as you said, faces the Europe-bound seafarers, but practically every Filipino seafarer? Yeah. There are three areas where we need to do aggressive reform. Okay. Policy. Okay. Uh, legislation. Okay. And institutional framework. Okay. On policy, as I said, we have to be very clear on our objectives. Okay. Uh, is it safety or labor or okay. safety? But we know that the impact will be on creating jobs. Okay. I, I think that should be clear. Okay. What is our top top line objectives okay. in implementing the STCW convention? There is none so far that I know. Okay. So the on legislation. If you look at all the legislation and the regulations that were issued and enacted and formulated by the agencies implementing the convention, they are so uh, conflicting. No, no, uh, no cohesive, uh, no cohesive implementing uh, regulation. So. Okay. The, 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 the schools are saying, for example, they change, the implementing agencies change the curriculum okay. every two years. Okay. But you finish a course four years. <laughs> okay. So you have not done your two years yet, and then another set of curriculum will come in. So uh, even uh, the legislative, uh, the legislative uh, way of doing things, our legislation, I think we have to be very clear. Every so often, people will talk about transferring the functions of okay. uh, implementing the convention from one agency to another. Actually, that is one big problem. Ah, yes, Th I, that I remember that. In, but you said that was resolved. That in initially, Marina was saying it's in charge, and then later, Ched was in charge. Yes. And then I don't know who's in charge now. Though. Yeah. Uh, since the implementation of the, since the convention was ratified by the Philippines. It was uh, at the beginning the Department of Labor and Employment. Okay. Yeah. So Marina only took over in 2014. Okay. Imagine more well, from 1979 or so. Since we signed the convention. It, it's really like labor. Yeah. You know, I, it was only when they have seen how it's the safety agency of UK of of EU yeah. that was auditing us that they realized and recognized that it must be safety. Okay. So it was transferred to Marina. But again, how was the implementing rules and regulations interpreted? That is another, another problem. Okay. I, how I wish Congress will do an oversight uh, activity over the way R810635, which is, which is the law that transferred the function to Marina. I hope they can exercise their oversight function there. And I think they're doing now. Okay. But I hope they will not come up with another set of uh, law that will conflict with the original intent. So okay. the, on the institutional reform or institutional framework, let us see how how the, like Marina and Ched uh, Mann, uh, people are saying it should be a seafarer. Or people are saying you should have more of this. Uh, we, I think Marina has more than 100 people doing the STCW. Okay. As to whether they are qualified is another issue. Now, oh, okay. uh, yeah, they were saying, what, I heard one Marina official say, the one who should lead Marina should be from the ranks. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, if you talk that way, uh, make sure that your recruitment and promotion policy are so tight right. that you are able to really choose the best among the best in your agency. Right. So it, it's not like just talking. It should be a seafarer. It should be a lawyer. Yeah. It should be a teacher, etc. Right. So the reform in the institution should be such that you are able to harness the expertise of all people necessary to run the 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 
the convention implementation. So, but again, uh, <laughs> if you look at the whole structure of uh, Marina, for example, uh, hardly can I, I hear now about safety of, the, of domestic shipping. It's all on STCW. Well, where, do, where does CHED come in here in, in this part? You know? Is there a role for them? Uh, Who? CHED, the Commission on Higher Education. There, well, the core function of CHED is education. Okay. And yet, uh, I think uh, Marina was able to get some of the functions away from CHED. Okay. okay. In the way that they have implemented curriculum development, etc. Oh, okay. You know, there are pedagogical principles okay. that go into education. I am not sure if the marina people the would have the expertise on that. Right. So, you know, all along, Chad has been studying how to do, you know, how to transfer knowledge. Right. For, so how do you check? Right. Well, I understand now marina is looking into that as well. Okay. But why do you have to to start doing that now that you have already a a, a government agency that right. is supposed to have the expertise in doing in doing these things, but I think it's 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 the the way forward for them. I think they're trying now to to resolve, to, it. To resolve it and give back. When when the previous administrator, former administrator, was there, he made a pronouncement that. Uh, he will give back the education part Component, yeah. of the yeah of the implementation to Ched. So it's well, it may be late, but I hope it's something that should be considered very seriously by government. Right. What is there um, feedback, or what's the perspective from the maritime schools? I'm sure they must be frustrated to begin with. You know what what rules they should follow, marinas or cheds. And, uh, but um, is there a concern? I, I think I've heard this from some, some people I know that following the SETW standards may require so much investments on their part that uh, some of them may not be able to, to afford uh, you know, operating. Is, is that a legitimate concern or is that the, is not an issue at all? For as long as I know the 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 schools, the maritime higher education institution, they're trying to comply. They buy the simulators, okay. millions uh, yes. of pesos. They buy it. They, as, as the president of uh, the Philippine Association of Maritime Institutions said, uh, because he really hit on Marina, I think just recently he said, we are following what government is telling us. Okay. If they tell us to jump, Right. We will jump. Yeah. But you know, they told us to jump, but that they did not tell us uh, how deep should be our. <laughs> you know, and now here, here comes IMO telling us that you jump, but you have to have to jump for four meters or so. Right. So uh, that so, is the problem with government. Now. Well, what's the what's the imminent threat? Is there is there a deadline that's approaching where? AMSA will say, okay, you're blacklisted or, or you're not blacklisted. Uh, is there a deadline that Marina or CHED or the Philippines is, is trying to, to, to chase and make sure that we're compliant in, in certification or in some way? The timeline, the timeline has been moving. You okay. know. It was supposed to be in October this year that decision will be made by EU. Okay. But it was moved. Okay. And uh, I understand yesterday I was listening to one of the officials of Marina. It will be by next spring, okay. 2023, that could be April or May. And hopefully, because I understand the president will be visiting EU yeah. in December. I, I, I just hope that it's something that he can raise. Uh, but again, the president should be properly uh, advised. Okay. Because if you say all these things that have been said before, uh, it will be very difficult to convince EU. You know, uh, no less than the former ambassador of the Philippines to the EU was saying that they have been very, uh, they, they have given us a lot of leeways. From 2006 up to now, they have been um, 
they have been withdrawing right. or that, that's extending. What I mean. Is there yeah. is there a point where they will say, you know, we we've been lenient enough, uh, and they'll say this is the line, and that you cannot cross, and then uh, we're in trouble. Yes, yeah, that was supposed to be October, but okay. uh, for whatever reason. Uh, they now say that it will be in spring of next year, and I, I maybe it's just my presumption that it has something to do with the uh, forthcoming visit of the president, okay. and I hope the president can, can 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 convince. But as I said, he should be guided properly, and I hope he will have to meet with all stakeholders yeah. and listen, not only the agencies. Right. You know, when you listen, for example, some higher uh, officials, high officials in government talking about the STCW, and they talk only of the snippets of yeah, things. Not the big picture. You know, you get to say, hey, if that, that is the way we talk to EU, uh, they have a good uh, agent, maritime age, safety agency. The MSA. the MSA can advise them. Right. Then... Well, let, let's uh, hope for the best. At least Christmas yeah. is okay. Yeah. So, anyway, we'll be right back with Attorney Brenda Pimentel. We're talking about the blue economy.